Well, hello and good evening from Jakarta. I'm Mr. Gary. Time now, 9 o'clock uh, in the evening, of course, on today, the 12th of March 2022. This evening's live stream uh, split up into two sections. We've got a little game for you. If you want to pick a number, you're more than welcome to pick a number and we'll have a look at the word behind that particular card and we can look at the word itself. We'll check out the spelling of the word and we'll also look at the meaning of the word in case it's an awkward one or one that you've not come across before. Perhaps you find some words a little bit uh, tricky. I like that word. And I'm just testing the sound and the audio right now at this moment. So yes, everything's looking good. Everything's looking great. I hope you're all well out there. I hope you're trying to remain positive in what are definitely challenging times, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Mr. Gary. This is my channel, English Speaking Skills. We look regularly at pronunciation of English. We're looking at grammar. If you want to improve your grammar, I've got lots of videos in there. Uh, lots of other videos as well to help you as an English language learner. Perhaps you're finding it a little difficult that's okay it's understandable and I absolutely love and welcome your questions so please join along in the chat even if you're watching on replay okay drop a comment drop a like if you have any further questions and where possible I will try to help you okay well we're gonna get on with this evening's uh, live stream and we're going to start by having a look at this uh, little game. Is it? Can I say it's a game or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little game, of course. It's a little game, and I just want to try and make it as easy for you as possible. And we're going to have a look at these 20 windows. All you're going to have to do, if, if you join, I'm watching the chat in the handphone again this evening. Uh, I don't know if you can see that at the moment so I'm going to just check that with you guys yes you can see the the the, the split screen that I've just initiated there so I'm I'm pleased you can and uh, I'll have a look at some of these with you and I'm going to tell you all about these difficult and tricky words now my first number I'm going to pick a number and my first number is isthmus. Isthmus. And this is one of those words that, again, it's a little bit tricky, as I just said earlier. And isthmus. I S T H M U S. Isthmus. So we're going to have a look at this word, and I'm going to tell you the meaning of it. I S T H M U S and the meaning of the word is if you study geography you might recognize this two syllable term as a reference to a tight strip of land between two seas all right um, forget the T H in the spelling they are silent so it's isthmus isthmus as the word is pronounced isthmus so just remember i s m u double s and we're going to have a little look at uh, some google maps on this one and we're going to see what can be described as an isthmus okay an isthmus so, or imus is it an isthmus uh, so, if we think about the area of the Panama Canal, uh, that's a strip of land between two great oceans, isn't it? The Pacific Ocean on the west side of the Panama Canal. And on the east side, I think that would be classified as perhaps the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Sea. We're going to have a little look at that strip of land in a moment, and I'll just show you an example. It's quite a like I say it's a geog geographical term and there are many examples of these from around the world and 
what you need to do really is have a look at Google Maps have a look at these types of lands and yes they are strips of land very narrow okay very narrow strips of land that separate the seas or the oceans and we can have a look at some examples here I'll share those with you on the screen right now if just give me a moment and uh, yeah an isthmus a term that you won't come across very often but perhaps if you're studying a geography or geographical related subject then you're going to see um, plenty of examples of an isthmus okay so I've put some here uh, we have a strait as well you could have a strait of land so that's spelled s-t-r-a-i-t straight okay and they're a little bit different in their stature but uh, they might have also uh, canals or rivers running through them that connect these oceans uh, in one way or another and usually those are for shipping purposes all right where instead of you know having to sail all the way around South America to get to China the ships might just go straight through the Panama Canal save them thousands and thousands of miles uh, and a lot of money on fuel costs as we know fuel is going up right now and if you think back to the canal in Egypt what is that Egypt canal called can you remember the name of it well we'll have a look at it in just a moment so you've got the Panama Canal It was famous because it was in the news, wasn't it, last year? A, a massive cargo ship got stuck in the Egypt Canal, which is called, uh, I say it's the, I mean, the name of it had just slipped my mind. And if you look at the pictures here, I'll just zoom in on a couple of those. And that's the cargo ship that I'm talking about. Um, you know, a very large ship with lots of containers I think the motors or the engines had failed and the a combination of the current underneath the canal and wind had actually meant that the ship had turned and it was rudderless so no directional control from the captain and uh, that stopped global trade for a good couple of weeks I think while they figured out how to release the ship and if I remember rightly it had actually run aground against the sand a little bit there so it had dug in we can see some of the pictures and they got they use a lot of tugboats to rescue that ship from that isthmus maybe so uh, yes a very very good word there to get us started and uh, remember if you're joining Please do drop a message in the chat. It's always nice to see my subscribers coming in. And it's always nice to see new people coming in as the channel grows to 330 something subscribers now. I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled about that. So, yes. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, our next word. And we're going to go with, I think, hmm. Yes, number 20. I like the number 20. Synedoch, S-Y-N-E-C-D-O-C-H-E. Synedoch. All right, so let's have a little look at this one, okay? We'll have a look at that one together now. Synedoch, and the meaning of this one is quite a tricky one as well, again. One that you're not likely to come across. And it's a rare literary device and it's more read than spoken so you're not going to um, hear it in everyday conversation um, and it's unfamiliar to, to many and it's pronounced synecdoke Syn synecdoke synecdoke is it synecdoke all right okay synecdoke so it's not synecdoche i would pronounce it like that it looks like it might have um, its origins in another country or from another language 
Synecdoke, okay, Synecdoke. So, just a literary device on that one. Let's go back and have a look at this other, or these other words, that I often think, goodness me, that some of those are so tricky. So, let's get rid of that one. I'll go with number one. Specific is the word on this one. So, how do you pronounce it? Well, it's S-P-C-F-I-C. 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 Specific. Specific. And what is the meaning of the word specific, I hear you ask? Well, if we have a think about it, specific means one particular thing. All right. Example, if I go and I want to buy a piece of jewellery, perhaps I will look for a specific gem, a specific type of metal or precious metal like gold, platinum, silver, or another type of precious metal. Specific means one, okay? So he chose a specific ring for his wife because she liked diamonds. He chose a specific ring for his wife because she liked diamonds. She chose him a specific watch because he likes expensive watches like Rolex or something like that so good a very nice one let's have a look at number eight yes of course should be quite an easy one a lot of learners have trouble with this though and the word is scissors scissors s c i double s o R S scissors C Zuz scissors okay so it's like a C Zuz it's like a Z almost scissors okay scissors and I've heard this one pronounced skizzers in the past um, a typical kitchen utensil all right used to cut things uh, or perhaps, you know, I usually glide through paper. I generally don't bother doing that. I just open the scissors and whoosh, straight through the paper. Okay, good job. So, let's go over and have a look at number three, I think. And this is one of those numbers that learners have some difficulty pronouncing. And the word is sixth. Sixth. And if you think about learning English, then you have uh, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. All right, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. And it basically means number six. Example, if I say a date, then I'm going to say the 6th of March. And Pallavi has joined us. And yes, I'm very good. Thank you, Pallavi. Uh, we're a few minutes into the stream now, so if you want to catch up later, it's no problem. And uh, I'm just going to proceed, and uh, the more people join this little live stream that I've got prepared for tonight, then the better it's going to be. So, Palavi, pick a number, please, if you will, pick a number. And we've got 20 words, and behind each number is a word. All right. We're going to look at the spelling. So far we have specific scissors sixth isthmus isthmus and sedok sendoki 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 it is sendoki it is. And she says number 13. Let's have a look. Now, have you seen this one before? British English and American English would pronounce this one very differently. Uh, we would say quinoa, quinoa in England, I think, on that one. Most people say quinoa. 
Um, American English, they might say Kinoer. They pronounce it as a K sound rather than a Qu sound. Uh, Quinoa or Kinoa. Um, what is Kinoa? What is Kinoa? Well, I think it's like a type of uh, cereal, is it? Or a type of nut? Something like that. It's one of those fads where people, for some reason, they were eating quinoa for a very, you know, it, it comes in and like a, like any fad. It's very popular for a very short spell of time. And then people suddenly forget it. And uh, I'm going to read you a little bit about quinoa. And it says, This superfood has gained popularity among health food consumers. People who like healthy food. And uh, in recent years, even though it's a grain from the ancient world, some people might mispronounce it as quinoa. Well, I disagree if it's mispronounced. I've heard that certainly in the UK as pronounced quin quinoa. Okay, uh, but the Spanish word has multiple pronunciations pronunciations so it's a it's a word from Spain and it's quinoa quinoa or quinoa 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 okay like I said they replace the Q with a K in terms of sound all right so quinoa is another uh, difficult word that people find tricky when they are um, using English as I mentioned there so let's get back on with it uh, just pick another number quinoa 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 I would say quinoa maybe that's because Americans struggle pronouncing cues or they don't get the concept of that so we have to try and you know be mindful that different people have different strategies sometimes for pronouncing things okay so Let's have a look. And what number would you like to pick on this one, Pallavi? Just you and me at the moment, isn't it? So we've done Kinoa. Kinoa, number 13. Uh, excuse me if I keep looking down. Uh, I am looking at the chat. Uh, so, yes, if you want to put your uh, put a, a suggestion in there, Kinoa. Kinoa. Um, I'll give you sort of five seconds. If I don't get anything, then I assume that maybe you're not there or there's a lag somewhere on the line, and I'll just pick a number. Right, okay. That's okay, then. I will pick uh, number ten. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Okay. What is onomatopoeia? I hear you guys asking. Well, we're going to have a look at that now. And onomatopoeia is one of those words, it's a poetry device, isn't it? Of course it is a poetry device. And how does it work? What does it onomatopoeia do? Well, I'm going to answer that for you in just a moment. And it says uh, words that imitate the sound that they make. All right, so I'll do uh, a live stream about poetry and poetic devices. I haven't prepared for that today. And it's uh, a six-syllable word. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Example. Buzz. All right, so buzz like a bee, maybe. It buzzes, a buzz, buzzing sound. So the word is actually very descriptive of the sound, bzzz, like that. If you make a buzzing sound, that's an example of onomatopoeia, bzzz, like that. Okay, good. Well, let's go back to the game and we'll, we'll see uh, what other tricky words we have next, because honestly, some of these are, ooh, man, onomatopoeia. And I think I'll go, unless somebody in chat would like to pick a word, Oh, sorry. What am I talking about? Pick a number! If you're there, pick a number. And uh, it's quite tricky sometimes. I can't see anybody in chat at the moment. 
So I will press number 16. Ignomonious. 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 Let's have a look at this one, shall we? Ignomonious. And we're going to talk a little bit about this word because I find this one quite an interesting one. Ignomonious. And we're going to find it. And I'm just going to, I've got the list here somewhere, so just give me a second. And it says, articulate speakers who show off their vocabulary use this word to describe a person who is dishonorable. It's a five syllable word. Ignom ignemius. 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 Ignemius, I think is the best pronunciation on that one okay so let's go on now and we'll pick another word guys we'll pick an ignominious ignominious so we're going to pick another word uh, another number if you want to pick another number guys if you want to tell me the number that you want we have a number of numbers remaining uh, 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, 11, 12, 14, 15, 17, 18, and 19 are the remaining numbers. So, I think if nobody picks a number, I will just pick one myself. Right, okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, well, this one's quite a tricky one. Because in some countries, or perhaps in some regions of the world, you don't have this little furry animal... All right, this little furry animal is a little trickster. Likes to steal nuts. Likes to steal other things as well, other little fruits and things like that. Be careful if you have them nearby and perhaps you're eating some strawberries or some little type of food like that. Uh, because these little squirrels will come and get them from you. And take them, and I'll tell you now, they're extremely fast and uh, if you look at uh, Mark Rober's channel on YouTube I believe he set up a squirrel obstacle course squirrel obstacle course so Mark Rober what he he, he was a, an engineer I think at NASA I've seen a lot of his videos or some of the videos in the past and uh, he set up a squirrel obstacle course show just how maneuverable, agile and fast these little animals are. Two main types of squirrel, uh, you have the English squirrel which is on the verge of extinction. Why is it on the verge of extinction? Well American squirrels, grey squirrels were somehow found their way into the UK and they uh, quickly multiplied and the grey squirrels don't like the red squirrels and the grey squirrels are a bit tougher a bit meaner quite nasty and aggressive the red squirrels I don't think are quite that way inclined but the grey ones, the American grey ones not a, not a very nice animal to have at all right okay yes uh, Palavi if you'd like to pick a number go right ahead just take a little drink I could do with a little drink actually or a little sweetie I don't see any numbers at the moment so I'm going to assume that there's nobody at the moment in, in the chat and uh, I'll just get straight on with it all right okay so uh, number 11 rural rural and rural means uh, if you think about a uh, a village okay that's miles and a, a very long way away from uh, the nearest town or city and we would say that that's quite rural all right so your village might not have many people in it living there uh, and those villages can be rural or described as rural villages Example, Mr. Gary's from a rural village or a rural community in England. The nearest city is 50 kilometres away. 
All right, something like that. So we have to think about being rural. You might expect uh, when I see this word, it conjures up images of farms, green fields, uh, etc. So rural. And Palavi picks number 17. Here we go. <laughs> Ah! Authorinoli laryngologist. Laryngologist. Authorinoli laryngologist. Author. 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 laryngologist. Author. laryngologist. Author. laryngologist. What? on earth is that well when you see gologist uh, it could be somebody who's connected with the medical profession and when I did a bit of research on this earlier it's people who deal with a specific part of the body okay and they would deal with your uh, throat okay your throat and they would also deal with perhaps your larynx okay so your larynx those are uh, a part of the throat in there so things that are connected with the throat perhaps the nose lips mouth but not teeth and they would be dealing with the bit that's behind the mouth, if you like. Okay, orthorilingo laryngologist. And I'll put the explanation into chat for that one. All right, so you can read that at your leisure. Yes, go right ahead. Yes, you can see that now in the chat. So. I'm just seeing how much of a delay there is in chat at the moment. There's a, a big delay. Orthorolingo laryngologist. Oh my goodness me. A tricky word. <laughs> I was not joking when I said I'm going to um, put some tricky words in front of you and me. Orthorolingo laryngologist. Tricky word. Yes, pick a new number. Okay, so uh, I'm just waiting for a new number. And I'm going to say that please be very careful about the things that are posted in chat. Hyperlinks are disabled, so don't post hyperlinks. Uh, if you're joining my channel and chatting and uh, please don't spam things okay otherwise i won't be too thrilled about that all right thank you so much it's a place for english learners so i'm gonna go with um don't know if palav is following along so i'm gonna go 15. and the word for this one is worcestershire Worcestershire, 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 or Worcester. In Amer Americans might say, "Hey, what about Worcestershire?" No, it's Worcestershire, Worcestershire. And I, I think I've told the story before. Yes, it is a very long word, but not the longest. Palave. The longest word in the English language is crazy long. All right, it is so long that uh, yes, it's impossible. I think somebody created. I don't know who created it, but it's, uh, it's, it's many, many, many letters long. Maybe I'll do a short one day. Tell you how long it is. It might take me about two minutes to pronounce it. It's that long, yes. I kid you not. Pick a number. 
Oh, sorry. Worcestershire. I haven't I haven't finished my explanation on that one, have I? Worcestershire is a very famous county in the UK. All right. You might have heard of uh, it's actually England. All right. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Okay, so if I zoom out here, uh, I'm hoping. Yeah. You can see in England, it's um, down here, Worcestershire. Beautiful cathedral. I'll read this for you because. Um, on the live stream on a handphone, you might struggle with that if you're on a handphone. Worcestershire is a county in the West Midlands, okay? So it's like the middle of England, but at the west, at the western half, alright? So we have East Midlands and West Midlands. The area that is now Worcestershire was absorbed into the unified Kingdom of England in 927 at which time it was constituted as a county over the centuries the county borders have been modified but it was not until 1844 that substantial changes were made beautiful place uh, really nice county I'm from up here somewhere in, in England if you, if you know uh, up in the north of England, some of you might be able to tell that, so others might not. <laughs> and uh, Palau so P Worcestershire, County of England. Phenomenon, phenomenon, is this next one? P H E N O M E N O N, F N O M. E none phenomenon what is a phenomenon I hear you ask well a phenomenon is like a, an unusual event okay so we might talk about uh, the northern lights over Iceland or the southern lights uh, Aurora Australis that being the southern lights and the northern the great northern aurora and those that's when the particles from the sun are charged in the earth's atmosphere and the, at night time the sky uh, flashes these green ribbons i can only describe them as across the light uh, across the night sky a phenomenon okay a phenomenon it's an unusual, strange phenomenon that I would love to see in my life. I've never seen it. Aurora Australis, Aurora Borealis, I think it, the other one's called. Aurora Borealis is the northern one. Australis, suggesting Australia, is the northern one. Okay, good. Pick another number when you're ready. Pick another number when you're ready. Sing a little song. <laughs> <coughs> okay, well I don't I don't see any numbers at the moment, so I'll I'll pick one for you. Oh <laughs> sorry Palavi. <laughs> I picked the number fourteen at the same time. You pick number twelve. I you know that I know there's a, a delay in the chat. Alright, so so sorry. Mischievous you might hear this one as mischievous some people pronounce that long e there mischievous is how I would say that one mischievous another word you could tell here vous highly likely it's taken from the French language so from France and uh, mischievous she's a very mischievous girl or very mischievous boy it means someone who misbehaves, someone who's naughty, who does 
wrong things okay they don't uh, act well perhaps in the classroom or at home or in another setting so mischievous is another word that is a very tricky one for learners mischievous m i s c h i e v o u s mischievous okay good job right ready when you are pick another number mischief oh sorry you said 12 mischievous number 12 of course a very good number and a very nice word as well successful suck suck s u c cess so this second c is actually a s sound success full that's an s pronounce it as an s successful somebody who achieves a lot in perhaps their job at school she's a very successful student she gets lots of high grades in her tests he's a very successful businessman he has a lot of money or in many businesses somebody who's successful you don't always have to be rich you know if you meet your targets in life perhaps you're uh, achieving things that you've always wanted to achieve successful is the word s u double c e double s f u l that second c is a pronouncing the s sound there successful good okay when you're ready, you can pick another number. Pick another number, Pallavi. I don't think anyone else is here, so it's just you and me, Pallavi. You've got me to yourself, I think. No Mohammed Ishmael or any of the Ishmaels in this evening, or Mr. Hassan. Nobody here, just me and you. And you say it's number two. Temperature. Temperature. Temp. Re ch, silent e. Okay, temperature. The temperature today has been thirty-two degrees here in Jakarta Celsius. Uh, I measure temperature in Celsius. Americans use this unusual scale called Fahrenheit. It's very old and outdated, and this is about the mid. Uh, metric and imperial systems of measurement for things and uh, most of the world measures the temperature in degrees Celsius you might hear it as degrees centigrade which is the same thing centigrade and Celsius are the same thing the same measurement uh, how hot is it where you live Pallavi how hot has it been today what is the temperature where you live i imagine it's quite hot if i remember you're on the subcontinent of india the great subcontinent of india there if you want to type in the temperature today was blah 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 degrees and you mark it with o c right a little o and then a, a large c a capital c temperature right and she says here it is 33 degrees celsius or centigrade yeah it's about as hot as jakarta but we were very lucky because we're in our rainy season today we're getting very hot mornings at the moment uh followed by uh rain showers and cloud moving in in, in the afternoon so we get some quite intense rain showers where we're coming to the walk towards the end of our rainy season here uh, should be finished in about may or june but uh, they say that there's a a little ninia weather event happening and usually when those happen they're off the coast of uh, south america okay off the western coast and for us in the Pacific here, it, it can really adjust our um, 
weather well i say pacific i mean we've got java sea uh pacific indian ocean okay oops daisy just one moment while i try and get that light back on there is it coming on <laughs> i can't see a thing <laughs> Yes, the technical challenges of running a live stream, they're not they're not glamorous. Whoever decided to do live streaming. <laughs> and uh I've, the the story behind that is the great the 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 plug that I have for the USB is missing, so I've had to pl plug it in the PlayStation for the time being. But anyway, uh, that's another story for another time. Palavi, pick a number. Pick a number, Palavi. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm not seeing, so I don't know if you're there or not. So I'm going to go with number four. Often. Often. And. Well, we'll go with 19 in a moment. Maybe there's a delay there on the stream, okay, uh, on the chat. So, often, uh, I often phone my mother on WhatsApp. Now, Americans and other speakers might omit the T, so they might say often, often. But British English speakers would say often, often, right? So, we pronounce the T. In that one often I often go out for lunch with my colleagues I often take my book to my boss and she signs it every week okay I often take a break have holidays I often have holidays being a teacher we have a lot of holidays here in Indonesia Often. O F T E N. Next one, nineteen. Anemone. Anemone is how you might pronounce that. And we're going to have a look at this one in a little bit more detail. Anemone, and it's not pronounced that way at all. So I'm going to tell you the right pronunciation, the pr the correct pronunciation for this word, because it's not an easy one. And it says, from the buttercup family, this wild, colourful plant may look hard to say for any person unfamiliar with gardening. And I was right. Anemone. A -ne Anemone. 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 Just ignore the mo ending. Anemone. And it says, which looks like it should rhyme with phone, but it doesn't. Animone, animone, that's it. Animone, that's the answer. Animone is the answer for that one, Palavi. So, animone is the answer. Animone is the answer. Animone is the answer. So, there we go. Right, okay, good job. And I'm going to share with you a couple of tongue twisters uh, at the end of tonight's stream. So, um, yeah, stick around for that one. It's going to be a good one. I say tonight's stream. Of course, I should say today's stream because we could be viewed by anyone, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> okay, 20 more, uh, 20 different tricky words. We've got two left, nine or six is your, are your remaining two numbers. Number nine or number six. And I think, I think she said nine. Draft, draft. Now, uh, in my my door here, there's a little gap beneath the door, and if the air conditioning is on, I can feel a draft coming from under the door. All right, so that's one meaning. Meaning number two. Uh, we can have something called draft beer or draft lager so what happens is uh, in one room there's a massive barrel then there's a pipe and that's connected then to a tap okay 
and then when they pour it like that that's called draft beer um, so yes draft there is actually a game called drafts as well if you add an S on the end uh, you could have a look and see what the game of drafts is I think it's like a like a chess game uh, maybe you know someone who likes chess tell them to try drafts <laughs> a draft D R A U G H T just pronounce it D R A U G H T draft or pronounce it D R A F T okay now when that's a different meaning draft it means that example if i write a draft it's not the final version of the uh, thing that i'm writing okay so if i want to write a book first of all i must draft it d r a f t and our final number any idea about this one and i think you'll find that this is an officer in the army colonel 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 no it's not colonel colonel and the colonel is a a senior position in the army all right my uncle was a colonel in the british army he led 5000 men in the war against blah 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 country okay with colonel another tricky word so there we go colonel <laughs> okay so i'm gonna just load up a couple of uh tongue twisters and then hopefully you'll you know you might want to try these at home and uh when when i get the <laughs> when i get this correct <laughs> Put it on for you. Okay, there we go. Okay, tongue twisters. So we've got some random cards. A big black bear sat on a big black rug. A big black bear sat on a big black rug. All right, look at take a look at my mouth movements here. Ooh, big black bear sat on a big black rug. Okay, big black bear sat on a big black rug. Now, there we go. Let's try another one. A big black bear sat on a big black rug. This one's a tricky one, a very old one. Susie works in a shoe shine shop. Where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. <laughs> be very careful with this one you might end up saying a, a an english word that's not a very pleasant word to say i hear a lot of people using bad words on the internet i don't agree with it but in this case you know you might say it accidentally accidentally all right so let me just go there I don't think you can see these yeah I haven't activated the stream on that one properly let's try and do that one oops daily All right, okay I'm just going to have a look now see how how this is displaying so you'll notice there because I want I want to make sure that it displays just well for you all right so there we go i'm just going to give that a couple of seconds while i can see the see the end result right okay there we go yes uh, i'd like it if i was a bit bigger but anyway i maybe i can change that if you don't mind if you want me to change it i saw a kitten eating a chicken in the kitchen I saw a kitten eating a chicken in the kitchen. I saw a kitten eating a chicken in the kitchen. Palavi, of course. If you're on your final exams, 
Uh, a lot of students uh, around the world are doing the same thing very soon. And of course, I wish you very well. All the very best of luck uh, with your exams. Of course, I wish you well. And anybody else who catches my live stream, you know, good luck. Just uh, do what you've been learning. Read the questions carefully. Read the answers. If it's a multiple choice, read them even more carefully. And I know you'll succeed. And I'm sure you'll tell me whether you pass. And uh, if you pass with flying colours, you know, let me know. I want to know. All right. Okay. Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. <laughs> Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread tricky one lots of f -f -f going on there you're gonna have to let get that jaw working thank you Gary sir you're so sweet love you sir I love you all too <laughs> of course I love it when I get comments in the in the chat I love talking to my viewers you know you've spent a lot of time in my channel and uh, I always appreciate when I have a lot of viewers or viewers coming into my channel you know it always makes it so very much worthwhile okay let's see right that's kind of cut my head off there a bit hasn't it so I'm gonna just cut zoom that back and see how we look now just give it a second while I catch that up there we go right yes that's a bit better but it's not better. I'm pressing a setting and the setting isn't... <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> Let's try that. Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. F -b -f -b. Okay. And I think we talked about those before. Oh, let me see how that looks. Alright, remove from streams. Okay. I want to try and make that a little bit bigger, but I can't at the moment. It's not allowing me to do that. So I'll try my best if I can if I can do something about that, I'll uh you know keep you posted. Here comes another one. I slit the sheet the sheet. I slit and on the slitted sheet I sit. Yes. Another questionable tongue twister. I'll just enlarge that one for you. I slit the sheet. The sheet I slit. And on the slitted sheet I sit. Yes, another great opportunity to use a, a not very polite word there. <laughs> I don't know who brought thought, thought of those. He threw three free throws. He threw three free flows. So you say it a bit faster. Do it slowly, like with any tongue twister. Do it slowly a three or four times, and then start getting faster. He threw three free throws. He threw three free throws. He threw three three fro throws. There, <laughs> nearly got me. He threw three three free throws. He threw three free throws. He threw three free throws. There you go, like that. <laughs> I hope you're practicing these ones as we're going along. Tom threw Tim three thumb tacks. Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. Yeah, Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. Tom threw Tim three t thumbtacks. Another very awkward one. We surely shall see the sun shine soon. We surely shall see the sun shine soon. Like I say, the key to this, do it slowly first. We surely shall. 
We surely shall. We surely shall. See the sun. See the sun. See the sun. Shine soon. Now, sun shine soon. Right? So, make it a bit faster. We surely shall see the sun shine soon. We surely sh shall see the sun shine soon. <laughs> Tricky. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. <laughs> I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go. Um, yeah, I think we'll we'll continue. We'll continue. I hope you're enjoying these tongue twisters at home, folks. And uh, these are not easy to learn. But as I said, make them and break them. Make them slow first. Try slowly doing them. All right. Lots of repetition here. Okay. So, uh, like I said. We, we're going through this uh, these tongue twisters and if we think oops, Daisy. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop break it down I saw Susie I saw Susie sitting in a sitting in a sitting in a sitting in a shoe shine shop shoe shine shop right three syllables again i saw susie i saw susie that's four so it's four three three i saw susie sitting in a shoe shine shop break it down make it slow all right once you do that then you can speed up a little bit and you know eventually you'll go i saw susie sitting in a shoe shine shop hmm, there you go Oh, this is an old classic. The classic. She sells seashells by the seashore. And this is just a part of it. Actually, this is just a small part of that uh, tongue twister. It's a much longer one. She sells seashells up by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Mm. I thought... I thought of thinking of thanking you. I thought I thought of thinking of thanking you. I thought, I thought, I thought I thought of thinking of thanking you. Yeah, another tricky one. I hope you're following along at home. If you're enjoying the content, oh, please remember, hit that thumbs up button. That really helps my channel grow. Uh, if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe it's free <laughs> oh and this is a tricky one as well four fine fresh fish for you four fine fresh fish for you four fine fresh fish for you all right speed it up a little bit if you're struggling break it down make it slow then try again speed it up okay the more you try with these tongue twisters, the better it will be. And my students absolutely love them. All right, uh, the ones who I teach uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy tongue twisters. Well, Palavi, you've been with me for quite some time, and uh, we're coming up on one hour now. So I'm just going to do the outro. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. And anybody else who likes to learn English, I hope you enjoyed my stream today. If you do, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. It is here somewhere. All right, down there. That, that's the watermark. The watermark is here. The red subscribe button might be down there. It depends if you're watching on a hand phone. And what I'll also do for you just for you for joining thank you so much little playlist up here yes there playlist there and another video here I'm so pleased that you joined and I'm so pleased that you caught me on uh, VOD thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves 
stay safe out there in a dangerous world. All the very best to you and uh, a very good night from me and a good day to you. Have a lovely time. Take care. Thank you so much, Palavi. Bye-bye.